Nehemiah Mabry is a structural engineer, entrepreneur, and an educator who builds bridges for a living. So you are the perfect guest to, to have here. I just want everyone to listen to a really important moment from that press conference about the structural integrity of this bridge. This is what officials said. If a, a, a member fails, that would likely cause a portion of or the entire bridge to collapse. There's no redundancy. The preferred method for building bridges today is that there is redundancy build it, built in, whether that's transmitting loads to another member or some sort of structural redundancy. Uh, this bridge did not have redundancy. What did you make of that, that this bridge didn't have any, any redundancies on it? Yes, thanks for having me, Caitlin, and prayers to all affected by this. Um, what this is referring to is the type of uh, structure that existed in this main portion of the bridge known as a truss. Over these three spans there in the middle, truss is made up, is made up of uh, diagonal mem members that look sort of like a triangular web. And these types of structures are often fracture critical, meaning that if the key component that is either pushing or pulling against another component adjacent or next to it, is compromised, it can lead to further compromising or domino effect of the members that are along it. And so around the late 70s or 80s, our coding authorities began to really emphasize the need for structural redundancy. However, today, as, as was said, um, it's quite different. But during this time, it was known that trust bridges are very strong. They're among the strongest that you can kind of use in terms of the, the ability to support vertical weight. However, as we learn things and, and situations like this happen, the need for structural redundancy became more and more part of our, our coding lexicon. But, but given those coding changes, as you said, came in the, closer to the 80s, I mean, this is a bridge that was built in the 1970s. So it, this is something that would have happened before those coding and structuring changes happened. Yeah, it's hard to tell because there were some lessons we learned in the engineering community in the late 60s that began to change sort of the emphasis on these uh, design practices. And so it was designed right around that time. Um, however, I would say that trust bridges, and in this case, it's a continual trust, uh, continuous trust that actually shares loads across supports as well. So beyond the fact that the trust itself could potentially be fracture critical, you also have situations where loads are redistributed or attempted to be shared across supports. And so we're talking about different levels, whether it's talking about micro of the actual trust members or even the continuous nature of that portion of the bridge in general. It's always important, of course, to have redundancy. And this is something that has become towards the later, latter part of the 20th century, something very, very common now in the bridges that we design. So, it, I mean, as they're talking about the massive undertaking that is, you know, rebuilding this bridge when it comes to that, obviously a lot of steps before that. I mean, is that something that, that would be different in the reconstruction this time around? Yeah, a couple of things would be different. I mean, obviously the, the ship sizes, as was mentioned before, have drastically increased since the, the time of the bridge instruction. Not only that, but... As we know, there are a number of protective measures even beyond the structure themselves that are put in place, such as dolphins and, and fenders that are put in place to protect against collapse or impact of this nature. So that being said, I think modern traffic conditions, modern environmental circumstances, you know, are, are obviously modern shipping uh, circumstances that we have now will all be brought into consideration in the reconstruction and redesign of this bridge. Yeah. It's a long road ahead. Nehemiah Mabry, thank you for breaking all of that down for us. Thank you.